everyone. Welcome to Friday Night Open the Vaults with me, Dan the Slug Bates. And uh, joining me this week, don't, don't ask about the slug. Just, uh, <laughs> just I say I'm done already. <laughs> just died. Just, just accept it. I have, and then just, just kind of go with it. Um, That's what he tells his sexual partners as well. <laughs> Joining me this week is uh, Ad the Bear Trotter. Don't ask about that name either. How are you guys doing? <laughs> There's nothing innocent about that. Come on. It's like I'm cuddly like a bear. I'm a little bit furry. That's all that it means. That and I like to hibernate. That is all of this. That is all of this. <laughs> <laughs> right then, we are here. We've had the uh, we've had the codex for a couple of days now. Um, so You've uh, had the codex for a couple of days. <laughs> I've had it for about 45 minutes of me just going, Oh my god, have you seen this thing? It's amazing! <laughs> yeah, uh, There is some really cool stuff in there. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, we've been kind of... So I thought what we'd do... You know, it's going to take a fair few weeks for the real kind of broken combos to come out. Uh, so we'll oh, be yeah. definitely keeping our ear to the ground and um, making sure uh, that we bring anything broken to into the limelight for everyone to see. But until <laughs> then, I just thought you, we'd go through, give you our initial reactions to it, Maybe point some things out that uh, maybe you guys missed. And if you find anything that we've missed, please drop it in the comments underneath. Um, we'd, uh, yeah, we'd, we'd love to read about it. And if it's broken, I want it in my list. So give me those give me those juicy details, people. Oh, yeah. Um, so we are going to start with Les Best Marine book. Les Best this, this is one of three that's come out. So like I said, it's a good job we're just kind of doing it briefly over all of them because it would take hours to go through all three of them. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, starting from the front of it, really, um, it just confirms the whole Angels of Death thing that everyone's been talking about. This is, uh, it's kind of, it combines a few rules together. The animation of No Fear, the re-rolling morale, uh, the Bolter Discipline that came out in one of the chapter approved, or the FAQs, meaning um, they count as within half range if they stand still. And um, Shock Assault, which is what they've been previewing for quite a while, which is if a Space Marine unit charges, or is charged, or performs a heroic intervention, it gets plus one attack. Yeah. Really cool rule. However, what they didn't cover quite um, <coughs> quite as much online is Combat Doctrines. They did like kind of briefly mention it, but they didn't explain what it was. Um, so it's, it's really cool. Now, this is GW's attempt, really, at stopping soup, or stopping people wanting to soup. Um yeah. So they've said, if your army, not your detachment, if your army is all Space Marines, you get Combat Doctrines. Now there are three Combat Doctrines. There is a Devastator Doctrine, a Tactical Doctrine, and an Assault Doctrine. And you start in the Devastator Doctrine. So turn one, that that is what you've got. So you can... So uh, uh, while you've got the Devastator... It's, oh, go on. I was going to say, it starts the game with you increasing the AP of uh, heavy weapons and grenade weapons by one. Yeah. which by itself is actually really good I like it a lot it's really good the system that they use is I think it works really well for marines I think it's mm -hmm. I think it's quite cool so yeah you start with devastator so you're heavy in grenade you increase the AP by one you can in turn two move it onto the tactical doctrine so that means you lose your devastator doctrine that's gone and now uh, the AP of all rapid fire and assault weapons is increased by one so you can't just switch and choose these you can leave it as devastator doctrine the whole game if you want but if you move on to the tactical, that's it. Devastator's gone. You can't go back to that. And um, you need to choose at the start of the first... Well, start of the battle round. So it's before either player's turns, even. Mm -hmm. Which means you can gain the benefits of like Overwatch, stuff like that. Or spec scan, because I think we will see turn one deep strikes again. So it will affect your weapon. So it, it is something that you need to be aware of. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and um, so yeah, it works very similar to Devastator, and and again the same. You can then move it on again if you want to, into the Assault Doctrine, and uh, all um, pistol and melee weapons gain an extra minus one. But again, there's no going back to the Tactical Doctrine. So it's basically turn one when there's a big distance between you, all your heavy weapons with the long range are minus one. As you're closing the gap in, as you're closing the gap, you change the Tactical Doctrine. So your, 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 your 24 inch bolter weapons or that kind of thing get minus one and then when you're in assault you switch it over to the assault, the assault yep. doctrine. I think it's really cool, it's a really cool little thing but that that's what they're giving you to try and stopping you soup. <laughs> stopping you souping. The um, idea is the benefit is meant to outweigh the ability to soup isn't it? 
Yeah. So. And so the initial question is, do we think it does? Well, uh, well, that, that was what I was about to say. So my initial reaction to that, looking at it, I think this is a bit of a trap. I mm-hmm. wouldn't get drawn into that too much. It sounds really good, and it is really good. If you just want to play pure Space Marines anyway, then great. You You're getting something for nothing. You're an awesome yeah. bonus for nothing. But my initial reaction is that that is not worth it. The ability to plug assassins or other psychers from other marine chapters or guard screens or an imperial knight, I think far outweighs this benefit. Quick question here. like It says in your army, if it is this... Now, you add an assassin during deployment. Does that mean it removes it because it's before the game? But if you were to plug in one assassin? Oh, I see what you mean. For the yeah, two CPs? Someone one in. Uh, or is it bef- when the list is written? Mm, interesting. Let's have a look at this. Uh, if you have a battle forged army, units only benefit from this bonus if every unit from your army has this ability. So, I, I would need to see the wording on I, the assassin one as well because if mm. that's add an assassin to your army straight away you lose it don't you yeah, exactly. so yeah it's like yeah. zero super abilities I mean I would say that I would say so if if, if you're if the assassin is in your army it's not in, it's not in your opponent's army <laughs> and it's not it's not wandering around the field aimlessly it's in your army so I would say because what it's saying is basically everyone has this everyone has this combat doctrines but you can only use it if everyone is everyone yeah. is a space marine so interesting but that was an interesting point though Ad. it's definitely worth a look into because you never know GW in these weird wording situations can happen um, so yeah that, that's very interesting I thought that was that was really cool that's that's obviously people wondering are they just going to like ban the soup like they did before with like um, Eldari and Chaos and you know, sorry, Yunari, Chaos, and Imperium. And the people wondering, are they going to take that further and stop the soup altogether? But it looks like they're not. They're just going to try and give people extra bonuses to um, to not soup. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, the majority going through the book further on, it's all very similar. It's all like n- nothing's really changed that much in regards to unit wise, reg- like existing unit wise. Um. There's a new troop squad called an Incursor squad. Um, I've not really, um, I've not really seen anything about these guys online. They look, they look okay. Um, I mean, intercessors now they have loads of new stratagems and stuff like that that you can use on them. But oh mate, yeah. Uh, these Incursors don't seem to have that much in the way of stratagems and buffs and stuff like that. But they can lay a haywire mine, so they just. They put a mine down basically, and it does D three mortal wounds if you if you go near it. So they can go around planting little mines on on objectives, which is kind of cool. Um, but uh, annoying night place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. Oh, if you want to walk onto that, you're taking D three plus one. Other oh, vehicles, it does D three plus one mortal wounds. Which um, is, you know, it can be pretty good. You know, if you roll that five or six, taking four wounds off a night, you're taking sixth of its health off, like straight away. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. that, that's a big deal. The other big thing that they do is they ignore all modifiers. So uh, you think, oh, that could be awesome for Eldar planes, but they don't um, they don't have uh, access to any special weapons or nothing like that. They oh, just that's... yeah, they they just have bolt rifles, so they ain't killing planes. <laughs> if they, they can have not. access to like a tactical squad, plasma gun, maybe and, yeah, and, uh, all that, on, and las cannons, all that kind of stuff. Then mm-hmm. that'll be kind of cool, but um, maybe that'll come in the future. Oh, the one thing, the one big thing actually that's changed for an intercessor squad is they're starting to give options to them now. Um, so you can take a, there's about three different bolt rifles and stuff that you can take, but the sergeants can start having they've got their own kind of melee weapons that they can take now. So yeah, take thunder hammers, thunder and, hammers yeah. and fists and whatever, what have you. So um, that's kind of cool. That's something they're not taking and. Although everyone's talking about the Thunder Hammer going up to forty points, but um, which is a big deal. That is for characters. Deal, yeah, but that is for characters, so it's still sixteen points for them. And then you know the uh, the Intercessor Sergeant has three attacks base, but so when he charges, um, it's four attacks. So you know, you, because of the shock assault rule, 
So you, you're getting your, you're getting your points worth there. There's it's lots of ways to add to that as well. To add plus one to hit, plus one to wound. Yeah, yeah. There's so much access there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that's kind of cool. And hiding him in an intercessor squad with 18 wounds in front of him is uh, it's going to be pretty hard to get get to him. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. Um, everything else. Let's have a look. Waiting for the next because there's a few new. Well, whilst, units. whilst you have a little look, I'm going to talk about something that I'm really excited about. Ooh, just generic space marines. So it's chaplains. We haven't seen this unit in like forever. Ah, yes, yes, yeah. Like forever, forever. Like it feels like forever. so long. Yeah, forever, forever, ever. <laughs> yeah. So, so it feels like we haven't seen them in a long time. And there's a reason for that. They were shit. <laughs> but um, <laughs> they've now gained litanies of battle, which yeah. I'm absolutely in love with. Yeah. So it's kind of like the Dark Apostle. It's, they get a prayer and things, but the one that I'm really, really digging is um, Canticle of Hate. That's the one. So, yeah. yeah, so if this litany is inspiring, you add plus two to charge also friendly chapter units within six of this model. Which is absolutely insane. And then, in addition, when a friendly unit makes a pile in consolidate within six of this model, that unit can move an additional three, so you can pile in six, six inches. Yeah, and yeah. that's insane, but plus two to the charge. And there's something else that we're going to talk about later. Mm -hmm. But it, we're talking about Alpha Strike coming back. Well, cool. I'm dropping nine away, and I'm getting plus two to my charge. Yep, yep. I've. You know what? This is getting a little bit easy to make these charges now when you come down. Like some Vanguard guys with like all the weapons in the world, yeah. extra attack on the charge, you know, extra AP if you go to Assault Doctrines, and you're just like, wow, this is a, this is pretty good now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no yeah. That, that is awesome. The one thing to point out on that table is um, pretty much all of them, I think all the rest of them, uh, you can, when you get your prayer off on a 3 plus, you pick a unit. So you go, this unit gets plus one to hit or, or whatever the prayer is, but that Canticle of Eight is the only one that goes, this is a buff, this is an aura for everyone who stood within six. So that's what's really cool about that one. So I think if you're going to take a Chaplain, that's the one to take, really, because you're going to get the most bang for your buck. Yeah, the, the other one that I want to shout out to is the... Uh recitation of focus which is plus one to hit to a unit because mm -hmm. so i think it's now possible to build a death star again in space marines because okay. that gives plus one to hit on like ranged weapons and something that me and boxy talk about is um centurions like um as all the combos in the world you can get plus one to hit on all of their weapons yeah that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Like they've got the Hurricane Bolters hitting on twos now. You can easily give them reroll ones, and you can also protect them as well. Because mm -hmm. um, inside Codex Space Marines, well, we've got the um, new Psychic Discipline, and one of the spells is called Shrouding, and that's from the Vanguard Discipline. Yeah. So you, you have to be that sneaky librarian dude with his hand out mm -hmm. to be able to do it. But it's effectively like Gene Stealer Cults, like Stratagem, you cannot target this unit unless it is the closest unit to you. One, th one thing to bear in mind with that, because I'd also looked at that, I yeah. believe mm -hmm. uh, it has to be a Phobos unit, and it does. So you, you, uh, you pick a Phobos unit, and that can't be targeted. So you can't pick uh, Centurions, for example. Yeah, I was yeah. getting all ready for when my Death Star, and you <laughs> shoot me down like this. Damn. My mind went to exactly the same place, Ad, and I've already checked it. <laughs> And it has to be a Phobos unit, I'm afraid. Alright, screw you, Phobos Marines! <laughs> you may look awesome. Unfortunately, Phobos Marines either come in units of three or they're armed with botters. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> um, Bless. I don't know. Right, okay then. So, um, so I'm going through the kind of the next new unit to pop up is the Invicta Tactical Warsuit. That is the new kind of dreadnought guy that's not dead. He's still alive, but he's kind of a dreadnought. Um, so these guys I think could be really cool um, very alien-esque isn't it jump inside the suit yeah, yeah, that'll yeah. like something out of the Matrix or like gun down all the giant robots at the sky at the end mainly yeah, it's, it's just the fact that they can deploy nine inches away like a scout but um, they get plus two to their charge as well <laughs> <laughs> go start the chaplain over there yeah mate <laughs> there's no reason why not like if that chaplain's on a bike you know it's so easy to get him there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you know th there's the one with the jump pack as well I'm assuming he can deep strike because yeah. he has jump pack yeah 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 or he can jump out of a pod or he can jump out of a pod one. yes mate 
so uh, yeah, um, um, so uh, yeah, he looks he looks really cool. He's kind of good in combat. Um, he's he's got a twelve inch flamer. He deploys nine inches away. He's getting a charge off first turn. He's um, also got a heavy bolter that he can use as a pistol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like you can start pistol really with him with a heavy bolter, mate. Yes, mate. Three of them just kind of lining up on the front line. Yeah. No, no, nine inches in front of your opponent is like a Jesus. You know, if you've got if you've got some say a unit, you know, three predators or whatever it is that's sat there, and you're like, well, I really hope they don't get shot. Sticking three of them on your on your opponent's front line and going, you you know, you can either deal with me or I'm going to punch you in the face. Uh, yeah. It's a pretty good distraction tactic. That's uh, so I, I think they're really. That's cool. the thing. Yeah, you can put you three can in there. Them. Yeah, they they release a lot of things that are a bit meh, but I think they're actually really cool. They will be seen. They will definitely be going into one or two of our battle reports. I think. Just out of interest, are they Phobos? Are those ones? You know. <laughs> <laughs> they're not Phobos, mate. You can't protect him with a psychic power. I'm afraid. Oh. Um, no, but they can fall back in charge as well if they're um. What they call white, white scars. scars. That's pretty cool. They certainly can. Well, yeah. yes, interesting fact with white scars, but we'll come on to that when we're talking about chaps tactics. Yeah. Um, uh, Inceptors, suppressors. We've all seen these before. Uh, land speed, land speeders. Cool thing. Yeah. But well, you know, white scars. I mean, you'll you'll see that I'm very white scar biased in this because I have like 50 painted up white scars, and they are my favourite chapter anyway. Uh, to be fair, if you have anything painted, he will be biased towards yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Things that go through my mind, but um, land speeders, white scar land speeders, take them in a unit of three. I think land speeders are really quite cheap for what they are anyway. Well, right? the big thing that was bad for them was they move and they suffer the penalties to hit, mm -hmm. don't they? That that was the main thing. Like oh, they made yeah. them cheaper, but whilst they had assault cannons, you're just like, eh. Mm. They had heavy bodies. Yeah. But, uh, but now, uh, what I was thinking before is, you take land speeders and you put two flamers on them. Yeah. Uh, two heavy flamers, which mm. I think is like two d six strength five minus heavy bottle shots, just auto hitting. I think is awesome. But if you take them in a unit of three, they move twenty inches. But then if you read it like first turn, say you could, you know, I mean, if it's something isn't within twenty eight inches, which is unlikely, but say it's not, you could mm. go. 20 inches plus an advance then charge maybe you pin something ta uh, tag it whatever then fall back flame it charge it ah oh, I think they're awesome they could be cool, cool in white scars so land speeders definitely people. land speeders um, alright going through eliminator's got a few new options but I'll be totally honest with you everyone was getting all excited about this whole oh, fall I back you yeah. know yeah shoot and fall back and um what was the other one? They get plus one to hit and wound and all this kind of thing. But only I if he doesn't shoot. Yeah, their units I, are free. I'm not sold. I don't. Yeah, the units are free. I don't think you'll see anyone take that. Eliminators are really good as they are. They they sit there. They get plus two to their cover. Um, so they've got a one up save. And they're shooting characters out of line of sight. They, so I, I, I just, I just don't think you'll see any of the people take any of this other stuff. Keep them as they are. They work really well. If you've not tried Eliminator squads in your Space Marine army yet, please do Try so. Em. They're amazing. Yeah. Uh, okay, Hunters. We saw a lot of Hunters at the ETC. Again, they're very unchanged, but they have come down slightly in points, which is ridiculous because they were really cheap anyway. Great. That's because GW wasn't at ETC. <laughs> yeah. Uh, great unit just for... Uh, people were using them to block characters stop people talking to the characters yeah like, like the toughness 8 free up yeah. uh, save you know the and they're like 11 points. or 12 wounds they're like 80 it's 11 points. wounds absolute yeah absolute bargain absolute bargain mate. Uh, right next one. Oh, so we've got the drop pod I mean everyone, yeah, everyone's got... been talking about this for ages so we can't spend too long on it but uh, drop pods and stuff in them come down turn 1 the interesting fact about that is it says this model and any units embarked aboard it are exempt from the tactical reserves match play rule. So I've looked at the tactical reserves match play rule, and mm -hmm. this is the whole half your army has to deploy on the board as well. So if these units are exempt from that rule, let's so see. So you think you could put half, effectively spend all these points on drop pods, put everything in there, and then you're telling me you can also put another fifty percent up in the sky? Yeah. So let's so let's say I put. All my pods and all my units are worth twelve hundred points. 
Let's just remind the general public. How many drop pods have you got, Dan? I have about 13 <laughs> drop pods. <laughs> All right. Okay. From, yep. from the good old Gladius days. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, so, yeah, say, say I have about 1,200 points in drop pods and units, and then I've got... So I've got 800 points left. So mm -hmm. because the 1,200 points are exempt, I have 800 points. That means I could put another 400 points in reserve, so I could start the game with 400 points on the board. Jesus. I think, I think that's the way it reads. Probably need an FAQ. Um, uh, the next one, ah, the Impulsor. This is the one, Ad. This is the bad boy. Yeah. This guy, this guy, people, is ace. He's really, really cool. He is a Primaris Rhino. Um, you can put some guns on him if you want to, or Icarus, yada yada yada. But fun like I think it was 97 points you can get two storm bottles on him and you can give him a 4 up in one so he's toughness 7 with 11 wounds a 3 up save benefiting from all the chapter tactics now and um, he has a 4 up in one I just think that's awesome I think that's actually getting space marine troops back out and running round and going around the table I think I think I think that has a lot of potential. I think you'll see a few of them because they are cheap, mm -hmm. and they get they get some they get some units back in the board. Intercessors. And if your really four hundred points of stuff on the table is these guys, <laughs> it's pretty yeah. nuts. Yeah, man. But that four up in one, they're just so tough to shift. Even Imperial Knights will struggle to shift them. The Melter Cannons are normally just going. Oh, I go straight through. You know, two d six damage. Yada yada. Whatever. But not impulses, mate. They're shrugging it off. They're loving life. They're loving life. Yeah, and they're, they're keeping the guy safe inside. And I mean, intercessors, that's what you want to keep safe. Because when they get close, they, they with their buffs and strats that you can put on them, they can do a hell of a lot of damage. Yeah, man. So um, I think they're cool. I think that's one to look out for. Um, you could definitely... Uh, I'll def I will definitely be getting a few of them and trying them in the battle reports. Uh, so right, so moving through. Right, that's all the that's all the unit wise done. Yeah. Um, I mean, everyone has seen the <coughs> chapter tactics. Games Workshop released them all. We've already done a video and put it up about which ones we think are cool. Um, yeah. But in case you missed it, basically, I think White Scars is amazing. They're basically now because they can fall back and charge like they used to, but they're like Harlequins now. They can advance and charge. Which is crazy good on Marines. Um, so they're what Harlequins want to be now, effectively. Um, then you've got... Uh, I mean, they're all good, to be fair. Now, they've kind of rejigged a few of them. Raven Guard is the obvious kind of go-to. Um, giving your vehicles a 2 plus save. Well, or everyone, most people a 2 plus save. Mm -hmm. But I think that's a, that's a bit of a trap, maybe. I think... Is it getting a two plus save is a bit of a trap? Is it for you? Because the thing, the thing is with that chapter tactic okay. is. Let, like let's assume Dan that your drop pod theorem is correct, right? We have to let's say you've got a thousand points of drop pods and guys inside it, right? Mm -hmm. You're another thousand points. Why not have a battalion which you know adds up to a thousand points of Raven Guard? Take the dedicated transports there, put them in cover so that your transports have a two up armor save, a four up in one save. And a minus one to hit. So the, as your five hundred points on the ground. The vehicles wouldn't get minus one to hit, but the guard, I thought they do a fair in cover. No, no, only um, I'm pretty sure only infantry. Bikes, uh, yeah, okay. bikes and infantry get that. Oh, okay. Uh, so, oh, just as if, it, if it's not a vehicle, it's also minus one to hit. But the thing is with the Raven Guard one is, I can get that. I can get plus one save from being in cover in the game or mm -hmm. I can get plus one save by spending two CPs on um, was it prepared positions yeah but I cannot get advance and charge from anything on the board do you know what I mean I, I cannot get a six up feel no pain double my wounds for damage table uh, lookups and uh, resolve an overwatch on a five plus like the iron hands do I can't get that any other way. I sort I don't know. I, I like the Raven Guard. It seems a bit of a go-to, but I think it's a bit of a trap. I think you can, if you really want to maximise what you get out of these things, you can get you can get your other benefits and you can still get what they get as well. Mm -hmm. But that's just my 
that's just my initial thoughts. Maybe they are completely broken. Who knows? Uh, but then, like you've got like the likes of Crimson Fists and Black Templars with their re reroll charge. Ultramarines fall back and shoot. Ultramarines fall back and shoot. Um, they are cool as well, but I don't think you'll see a massive amount of the like Ultramarines. The Black Templars rerolling charges is great, especially when you're plusing two to those charges. You might start seeing those like seven inch rerollable charges jumping out of drop pods. That could be kind of cool. Um. Right then, so moving on. You've got the su successor chapter tactics. This is what everyone was talking about, where you choose your choose your two things. However, I've started. I've seen two tournaments so far. Ban this. I just say yes, yeah, straight out the gates. To just and this is a really entertaining post as well. It's like, do I need to make a spreadsheet of like um all the space room chapters and where they actually come from? Yeah. I'm like, what? I think you're taking this far too seriously. <laughs> so yeah, I'd, 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 so I'd, whether that, whether events are going to take up on that, I don't think there's anything that bad in these lists, really. I don't think we'll be banning them from our events. But it's um, part of the book, isn't it? Do you know yeah, what I mean? Exactly, but you know, I'll have a real read through them, and if something comes out that is insane, then maybe maybe that's what we do. Maybe they just become a a fluffy bunny thing. Who knows? Fluffy Bunny. Fluffy Bunny. Um, so, Warlord traits, from what I can see, are very much unchanged. I don't mm. think there's anything really that big in there. Um, no, we, we've seen all these in in uh, Vigilus Defiant and all that kind of stuff. Uh, <laughs> right, stratagems. Ah, do you got any stratagems out of this book? Uh, there wasn't any that really stood out to me. Mm. To be honest, how the space it all seemed fairly generic. It all seemed like stuff that they've already had. Yeah, Do you know yeah. What I mean? it's, it's a lot of stuff that's come out of the Vigilus Defiant stuff now. Yeah. The one thing that's kind of cool is um, the Veteran Intercessors has come in from the Vigilus Detachment, so you can just mm. you can just make them uh, that kind of thing. Um, but the uh, which one was it? Da -da -da. This is the ones where you're buffing the Intercessors. I cannot remember what it's called. But well, it's the... there's Bolt Storm, isn't there? Then there's Veteran Incessors, and there's one other. I can't yeah, remember. Do, do you know the ones where, like, there was a there was a veteran. There is a um, there is an Intercessor one where, like, your auto bolt carbines auto hit. Yeah, yeah. that's one that I just right? told you about. Yeah. Oh, is that, oh sorry, that's is that Bolt Storm. Sorry. Bolt, yeah, is that Bolt Storm. Storm? Right, okay. Yeah, but, like, before, but that kind of already existed. Yeah, but before you had to spend CPs to become a veteran intercessor squad to do that. Yeah. Whereas now it doesn't say that you have to be a veteran intercessor. You just have to. Be oh, I see now. what you mean. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. I'm so with you. That's just become a lot cheaper CP wise to get those really cool upgrades on your intercessors. Mm -hmm. you, you don't have to spend a billion CPs to do it. Um. So there's, there's a couple of really cool ones that I've seen. Uh, one is um, I said that, that so on the vehicles there seems to be a lot for vehicles. Hunter Slayer missiles kind of cool. You just kind of um, you shoot at a, a missile effectively at something, um, but it's a vehicle or a monster. But you use their ballistic skill, so that it can't be affected by minuses or anything like that. So an yeah. Eldar fly that's minus three to hit. Oh, but you hit on a three plus. I'll hit you on a three plus. Uh, does DC mortal wounds? Kind of cool, I think. One CP. Don't Eldar flyers hit on the two plus, but get minus one as an extra? Oh <laughs> yeah, nice ad. Yes, they do. So you're actually hitting it on a so two. You're hitting them on two plus. Yes, that's. Right. Which, when you think about it, is actually pretty insane. That is, that is really cool. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I like that. That's that's nice. Um, there's a couple of stratagems that I've seen. I'm trying to find the other one. There's one here, duty eternal. You hire, choose a dreadnought. As soon as someone starts shooting at your dreadnought, you go, "I'm going to halve all the damage inflicted on it." That's yeah. That's Is that wisdom awesome. of the ancients? No, that's um, duty eternal. That one's called. That's a new one. Duty wisdom okay. of the ancients was the one where dreadnoughts give everyone reroll ones. Oh yes, I remember now. Yeah, and then there's a, there is another one um, that does a similar thing. Well, not similar. It does it for vehicles. Basically, it means you. Uh, so someone starts shooting at your vehicle and then you go, okay, all wound rolls of one, two, three, um, they don't wound me anymore. Here it is. It's pretty good. 
Oh, hang on. Use a stratagem that is not a vehicle. Ah. So, sorry, that's not on a vehicle. That's on um, on intercessors or any troops, whatever. Yet you go. And a wound rolls of 1, 2, 3 always fail. I think that's really cool. That really helps in the kind of night matchups and that kind of thing. When people are trying yeah, to get rid of it. because everyone and their mums is running thermal cannons. That's right. That's right. Everyone and their mums around you. Everyone and their mums. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, but other than that, I mean, there's there's a couple of new ones, but um, most of them are, um, most of them are, no, they don't jump out at me, but they look kind of cool. Um, there is a lot of old relics in here. Um, I haven't seen any new relics in the, in this space marine so, book that jump out at me. How about you? It, it's in the like special issue war gear. That's where you see the independent ones come out. So there's like a special section for White Scars. There's a special section for oh, yeah. uh, all those guys. And I can't remember what the generic Space Marines one was because um, there's stuff like um, the Hunter's Eye, for example. They've made a return, mm -hmm. but um, they, they seem pretty underwhelming, to be mm -hmm. honest. I like the Space Marine one. I said I yeah. think it's all about that speciality that you're going for now. Yeah. Again, you see, there's a few of these ones that were in the Vigilus Defiant books, so it's not new stuff. They're just moving stuff over from that book. Yeah. Um, then we've got the uh, there's two disciplines: the Librarius discipline, which is same old, same old. Um, the only thing that they've changed out of these spells is Null Zone. Null Zone has become half decent now. Uh, it's only only casts on a warp charge seven instead of 13 or whatever the hell it was before something really ridiculous um, so it's 7 now which is really good uh, and it's got an aura of 6 inches instead of 3 inches which is yeah. ace because when you're, when you're assaulted I mean it's mainly used for like demons and that kind of thing isn't it um, yeah. and it's so easy to stay out of a 3 inch bubble when you're piling in and consolidating and charging and things so 6 inches really helps with that power it also does something to um Psychic tests as well. Um, I think you always, I think you have psychic tests, which is pretty phenomenal. Within six, the result is halved. Yeah, but that's within six. So I mean, again, you get a movement phase before your psychic phase. Yeah, so, so you just move out. So just move out six inches. Yeah. But uh, that I think that that's really cool. It being on a seven and it being a six inch aura has really helped that power. I think that's a great call. Obscuration. This is the Phobos guys. I don't think anything has changed there. I had a quick look no. through it, but I can't see the exact really same. See yeah, I, I, I say I got really excited about Shrouding. Then mm. you kind of like killed my dream. Sorry, mate. Sorry, mate. But yeah, um, Tenebris Curse is the best one on there. It was before, and it is now. Yeah, uh, and that actually specifically doesn't stack with something that we're going to be talking about in the future as well. Oh yes, I've seen the one that's, that specifically says it doesn't stack. Yes. Um, so yeah that's everything out of that book uh, really cool it's a bit of a tome there's loads of pages but all the all the other Space Marine books are going to be uh, kind of referring back to this so uh, yeah. so yeah that's cool right then next on the board we've got um, White Scars mm -hmm. um, this this, this <laughs> I give you like 10 minutes alone here oh, mate <laughs> this is the book there's so many cool things in this book it is insane but there are lots of Every time I read through things. it, I've read through this book like three, four times now, and every time I read through it, I go, oh, what? They can but do this what? Thing, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm equally the same. Like, my first ten minutes, I think you sent me Ultrons, I was like, eh, it's all right. And then you sent me White Scars, I was like, holy crap, this is a thing? <laughs> like, Jesus. Yeah, these are great. So, yeah. um, starting at the front of the book, uh, there is only two units in this book. As kind of expected, um, unfortunately, you have Caroso Khan, uh, yeah. bit of a badass. He's pretty cool, but he's on foot. Uh, but you know, being being a white scar, you go, oh well, he'll hop on a bike, won't he? But he won't. No, there's no not. Caroso Khan on a bike. You get a Khan on a bike, which is a white scars call their captains Khans. Yeah. So, uh, no Caroso Khan on Moon Draken. Which I was quite disappointed with. I was really hoping he'd make a comeback. Well, that model is now just Kosaro Khan, is it not? Uh, yeah, Kar 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 so Like, the Kar model Kar that Kar used Kar to be that. That's what he used to be, isn't it? Yeah. Kosaro uh, Khan, that model. 
it's just changed now. It's now just like some random dude. Well, I think it's a white scars captain. I think that's actually what they've advertised it as now. I see. Yeah, which um, which is a shame because I mean, you want a bike mounted white scar army, don't you? And then you've got some Primaris guy lumping it around on foot in the middle. Yeah, you do. That know. is what you want. I don't know. I, I, th I think that was a strange decision. Give him a bike, man. What? He's like risen up the ranks on his bike, like assassinating all these people to get to there, and then he goes, "Oh, I don't need that anymore. I'll run." But the the so the thing is as well the issue so the the rule that Corsaro Khan has for the Khan is amazing. Add one to room to add one to wound rolls for attacks made with friendly white scar models within six. But yeah. That's amazing. That's really really cool. But obviously the 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 the, the Khan he's, on bike he's is walking. not Corsaro Khan, so he doesn't no. have that rule. All he gets is real ones like a normal captain. So that's that's a real shame, I think. Hopefully there'll be a Primaris bike coming out, and hopefully it'll be Corsaro Khan on Moon Dragon. A Primaris bike? Ooh. It's got to be a Grav bike, isn't it? But uh, everything's Grav. But uh, yeah, that was a bit of a shame. So, um, but I mean, to be fair, the Khan on the bike, he's got a cool weapon. It's D3 damage. Strength to use. Uh, oh, the Glaive, yeah. Yeah, but when he charges, it's Khan Spear, it's called. When he charges, he's Strength 8. Um, which is kind of cool, um, and he's only a hundred points, so he's a bit of a bargain. The car on bike, but he's not Corsaro Khan on a bike, which is what we all wanted. Uh, right, but that's the new units. Um, so then, what's next? Warlord. Ah, no, it's not. So we were, lightning assault is the next one. So we were talking about um, them trying to stop people souping. Um, and so what they've said is they don't even want you to soup different marine factions together. So they've said if you go, if you take all space marines, you get the doctrines. If you go all white scars, you get plus one damage to any melee weapon. And you read that and you go, holy hell, that is so good, that's amazing. You instantly start writing lists. And if you're like me, you got halfway down your list and you thought, Ah, this is just not worth it. <laughs> yeah. It's again it, if you want to play an all white scars army, it's absolutely incredible. Like if that's what you were doing before, you know, well done you. You you've really looked out. Yeah. I, I think that's a But if you're not, yeah. I think it's a trap, man. I, I don't know. I, I think you're better off souping like nine out of ten times. Yeah. Yeah. Like you say, if you're pure white scars, you know what, you're dedicated to the cause. Fair play to you. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I, I, I think if you're playing competitively, there's so many other things that you want out of that codex mm -hmm. and other codexes like the assassins. Yes, you just can't do it. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. So um, that's my take from that. Is it's brilliant, guys. Enjoy it, but I would not. I would not sacrifice all the other benefits for that. No. Nope. Okay. So warlord traits. Um, right then. So. Uh, there's a couple of cool ones in here, but there is an absolutely outstanding, stunning one in here. Now, I saw it as soon as I looked at them, and then um, I was talking to Ad about it, and he was like, Well, have you seen Master of Snares? Oh my god. <laughs> I, yeah, it's wow. Yeah, so um, basically, Master of Snares is uh, when an enemy unit tries to fall back out of combat from your captain, or oh, sorry, of your warlord, your White Scars warlord. On a four mm -hmm. plus, they don't go nowhere. It's like the it's just it's kind of like the mirror. It traps you in combat. You can have fly, you can be an imperial knight, you can have, you can do whatever. It just traps you. Um, uh, can we talk about how broke that is? Like that for is, real? That is like, crazy. this isn't limited to like um infantry only, for example. Mm -hmm. This is anything. So it's just like what? Mm -hmm. Nah, mate. Yeah. So when you're talking about just how quick these guys can be. Um, that is that is pretty crazy. Uh, so, well, what 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 are buffs were you t you were telling me earlier about stacking buffs on them about the movement buffs? Yeah, so there's a way with a chaplain. There's a way to get plus four to your charge, mm -hmm. and then there's a relic which allows your bike to move sixteen inches, ignores terrain, and can move over models. Mm -hmm. And then so you've got. You're getting your advance anyway. On top of that, mm -hmm. and then you're charging plus four. Which 
that that means that we can all make many charges now. <laughs> so Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So your your bike moves sixteen inches. You auto advance yeah. six, so you're moving twenty two yeah. inches. You get plus four to your charge, so you're yeah. averagely going eleven inches. So mm-hmm. averagely, you're going thirty three inches into something, and then when you get there, if it tries to fall back, and the, this is the, the the big thing that I had to check as well. Uh, me as the white scar player, I roll a dice. So that means you can, I can CP it to make sure it happens, rather than if your opponent had to roll it, they have to, they could CP it to make sure they get out. Yeah. So, it's uh, that I I think that's that is brilliant. And um, there is a if we can just skip the relics for two seconds, there is a stratagem called tempered by wisdom. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So you take Master of Snares because it's amazing. You'll you'll find it useful in every single game that you play. Um, but then, say you're you playing things with lots of monsters and vehicles, you go master uh, tempered by wisdom. I'm going to take an extra white scars, warlord trait, and I'm going to take hunter's instincts, which gives the warlord as well as that ability. Um, you get to add one to hit and wound rolls against monsters and vehicles. So and you know when you're loading these characters up with you know thunder hammers and, and whatever they're getting the extra attacks just for being a space marine yeah 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 it's it's yeah it's crazy it's really good so um yeah uh, yeah that that one that is a standout thing you will see that guys you will see that in a lot of lists you need to know about that if someone says to you, if you're stood on the other side of the table and you're saying oh god oh excuse me mate what's what's in your list and they say, oh, this guy here, he's got Master of Snares. That should just prick your ears up just a little bit and go, oh, 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 sorry, tell me, about, tell me more about him, mate, because he will screw you. Yeah. Keep an eye out for him. Okay, then. Relics of Kogoris. Kogoris? Uh, the one yeah. that stood out for me here. Um, nice to see the Hunter's Eye coming back, although because Death Star's not a thing anymore, it's not as broken as when I was using it. Yeah. Um... <laughs> But uh, Banner of the Eagle is really cool. Um, it's plus one strength. So all of your, so you can put a chain sword, say, on all of your bikers, and then they're all getting three attacks apiece when they charge in, and they're all mm-hmm. strength five. Yeah, with minus one because of assault doctrines. If you want to go down if, that route, if, if 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 you get to the third turn, if you're on the third turn and you've got down to the assault doctrine, then you can, then yeah, you can have minus one to all of them as well, which is badass. Yeah, there's also the um, fierce rivalry stratagem, which is one CP charge three d six for a white scar. Oh yeah, charge three d six and then discard the lowest. Yeah, yeah you don't which is charge 3D6, yeah. it's not the full three d six, but it's just making your charges so reliable. Yeah, that they really seem to be digging home white scars. You are going in, yeah, and yeah. you know what? There's there's even a um, actually we'll come on to that in a little bit, I guess. But um, there, there's psychic spells that even help with that even more mm. than what you currently are getting, and you're just like wowzer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, there's there's a couple of other cool things. There's a uh, what's that? The the Stormwrath bolts. There's like a D6 damage bolt bolt gun yeah. that you can take in the special issue. Artificer armor. We know what that does. We've seen that before. A five up fill no pain. That kind of thing. But um, those are the kind of standout ones for me. Uh, stratagems. We've already spoke about tempered by wisdom, which I think is really cool. Um, any others, Ad? No. <laughs> no. Not really. Not, is, not when it comes to this. Yeah. There is a really confusing one called Gift of the Khans, and I read it three times. Well, yeah, I read that one quite a few times. <laughs> I, as well. read it three I was like, times, I don't I, get it. I still don't understand it. I don't. I don't, I don't get what I get yeah. to do. I spent the CP, and I'm like, well, I, I don't know. I something to do with relics so please if anyone reads Gift of the Khans and understands it please break it down into Simpleton's terms and send it to me because what does this thing do I have absolutely no idea what it does um, I, I read it a few times I was, you know it just <laughs> couldn't click and if something doesn't click after multiple times I'm like you know what I've just given up on it yeah, now yeah. <laughs> like, just... it, it's had its chance to kind of soak in <laughs> yeah. it's not it's not in there now I'm never going to learn it until <laughs> someone uses it against me and then I'm like oh that's oh, what it does that's broken yeah I'm going to take that <laughs> yeah yeah, um, um, yeah that's a cool one. Oh, the um, they've still got that fainting withdrawal so when, when they sh- I think a lot of people will make this mistake is that white scars can fall back and charge still 
but they yeah. cannot fall back and shoot. But with this stratagem... Yeah, a lot of people will make that mistake. There is a stratagem here that you can use to make one unit shoot, but they can't all do it. So watch out for that, guys, if you're in a tournament. People will make that mistake. It will upset oh, a lot yeah. of people. So just be just be wary of that. Um, yeah, other than that, the, the, like I said, the, there are some really cool ones in there. Um, but no, but the, those are the main ones, really. Uh, Storm Speaking Discipline, the uh, Psychic Powers. Go on then, Ad, take it away. Take it away. You, you were excited about oh, this. Oh, mate. Yeah, there's so much to be excited about there. Like, it's nuts. Yeah. Um, uh, the main one for me was um, Storm Reefed. Which one's this one? So, it's Storm Reef means that you cannot be Overwatch. So, you That's cast it on one of your own units. And that unit cannot be Overwatch. So you've got this hyper mobile army mm -hmm. that can suddenly just roll over Tau. Yeah, uh, uh, you know that, that's exact. I was reading it and I was like, oh, okay then. So, so you go. Oh, I, I'm going to get absolutely it's, it's smashed a... by Tau yeah. unless I get this warp, this power off on a six. Oh, I've got it yeah. off. Oh, I've won. And there's no interaction from Tau for the psychic phase. It's just a thing that's going to happen for yeah. you. Yep. You're going to be able to go in, you're going to be able to wrap up to six inches with your bikes mm -hmm. as well, yep. and then you can stop units falling back on the four or more. And you guarantee that almost with a reroll, yep. and suddenly you've got this unit that's going to keep tagging other units mm -hmm. as well, just all throughout the game. You're like, cool, you're here, you're stuck. So you're, you're actually thankful if you're screening with his gun drones because you're going to make it, you're going to make these charges, and you're going to be fine. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, it's absolutely. insane. Yeah, it is. It is a bit bonkers, to be fair. It is a bit bonkers. But um, yeah, so that is that is a great book, guys. I would recommend getting that book. It's it's wicked. It's getting me excited to play Marines again. Um, oh, Dan's getting happy. I know. I, ne I nearly burnt all of my fi all fifty of my white scar bikes that I paid. Up. We I think all I've know got, that's a lie. I think I've actually got more than fifty, but. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, it got frustrating for a while, but I think they're kind of cool. Don't get me wrong, yeah. I, I don't think a 50 bike army is any before we, before we move on, by the way, I want to give one more shout out yeah. to Psychic Power. Ride the Winds? Oh, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, yeah so on. it's casting value 6 again, select a friendly white sky within 12 until the next Psychic phase, whenever it advances or charges, add plus 2. Ah, oh, yes, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. where the other plus 2 comes from. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's like, oh my god. Yeah, it is yes, cool. mate. It, it is yeah. it is really cool, but I mean you know white scars they were big psychers weren't they? So they should be they should have some kind of cool ones. See, I never think of them as doing that, but yeah, I get where you're coming yeah, from. No, yeah, but in the fluff, they they love it. Like uh, Khan, you know that whatever meeting that was about psychers, he was a big he was a big fan of the psychers. He likes psychers. He likes psychers. Okay then, so moving on to the Ultramarines book. Yeah. Um, this one got me less tingly. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, yeah, so it was full of all the characters, every single one. Mm -hmm. Like, um, And there was a few quality of life uh, improvements, um, like Tigeris, who became Primaris, mm -hmm. so I think he just gained a wound. Yeah, he gained a wound, and I think that, yeah, I think his hood got better, you know? You know this hood of Hellfire? I don't. I think he used to be able to re-roll... Oh, yeah, he can his... re-roll the result, but he can add one to the that, deny? Yeah, yeah, he used to be able to re-roll his result, but now he gets plus one to psychic tests, I think. Yeah. So that's, so, that's really cool. Yeah, so inside this book there is Carius, Cassius, um, Chapter Ancient, Chapter Champion, Chief Liberian Tigarius, the Honor Guard, Manius Calgar, uh, Reboot Glimmon, uh, Cronus Tellian, uh, Tyrannic War Veterans, which is their first comeback. I can't remember them since Index. Mm, I've, I've never seen them before. I don't they, know. they weren't. Yeah, I think they were in Index, but we've not seen oh, them since they? then. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Do you want to check them out as well? Because they're four to ten again. And then the Vitrix Honor Guards. Uh, the Vitrix Honor Guard are the guys that came with the new Manus Calgar <laughs> with the storm shields and power swords. Mm. Like they look dope. They're bodyguards. They're kind of like the Blight Lord Death Guard version mm -hmm. of themselves, but they come they with three up. They can heroically intervene. Mm -hmm. And you know what? They've got three wins each. But they are best. badass for their points. They are really good for their points. They're thirty points a model, yeah. As well, you generally will pay that for about a, like a character that's kitted out. Yeah, yeah. And, well, you yeah, get a, I, I like him. Isn't a commissar thirty points or a company commander thirty points? Yeah, yeah. Company you've commander. Got a, you've got a toughness yeah. four guy with a three up invul and a power sword and, and three wounds. And a two plus armor safe. 
four attacks. He hits on yeah. twos, two up saves. Five attacks on the charge. Yeah, I, I think they're really cool. They were one of the things I was going to highlight. They are an yeah. absolute bargain. So, um, yeah, yeah they, they are cool. And they soak up wounds for characters as well. And then, uh, That's just it. Oh, yeah. they only soak up wounds for Ultra Wounds characters. That's it. Everyone else oh, is yeah. like, I don't care, don't care. Yeah. But I believe they can also look after, um, what's his face? Kronos? Who can be in a tank? Mm -hmm. yeah. So they can look out there for the tank. That's certainly how it was in the last codex. I don't know whether they fixed that or not. Let's have a look. Uh, when a friendly yeah. Ultramarine's character model within three. Yeah, so they can intercept okay. it yep. for a tank. So you can have like this kitted out land raider and stuff if you wanted. Mm -hmm. You know, because it can fall back in charge. Sure, why not? Yeah. You know what? It's all right. But um, yeah, I think there's definitely things that are beneficial there. The units themselves. They're pretty strong, but all the characters that were good before will still be good. So Tiggy's still good there. Um, well, I think we've got to speak about Reboot, don't we? Uh, yes, yeah. So yeah, so yeah, we kind of skipped that over there. Uh, so Gilliman now, um, in my honest opinion, I don't think you'll see him. Um, he has come down to three hundred and is it? What is it? Three hundred and fifty points. So he's come down to uh, yeah. fifty. Um, but, he lost 50 points, but... And this is a big but. Yeah, yeah but he lost his re-roll to wounds, which is... Uh, so no, he lost his full re-roll to wounds. Oh, yeah. He now yeah. only gives Ultramarine's re-roll ones to wounds. Mm. So it, it's useful if you've got a backline of shooting. But the the main thing was he was going to sit with like a bunch of tanks and just go, we're awesome, everything is awesome. Mm -hmm. And that's, n that's not going to happen anymore. Yeah, yeah. I. Um, it really hurts that repulsiveness. I mean, I, I totally understand why they've taken them away. Why they've taken the reroll wounds away because it was bonkers. Super good. Yeah. It was but the really trouble good. is, without that, is he as good? Will he ever see the tabletop again yeah, without that, outside of fluffy bunnies? You need to drop him below 350 points. He's not worth 350 points as he is. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I think he's kind of cool. He's still good. Reroll ones and add one to charges and attacks and all that kind of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Not attacks, sorry. Um, advances. That it is really cool. You get the three command points, everything like that. But I don't think you'll see him. Not at three fifty, because, 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 because. On the other page, you have Marnius Kalgar. Now Marnius Kalgar before with Gilliman as he was, you never saw him. He's useless next to him. But now, he I think is awesome for two hundred points. Um, he's he does the same two command Gilliman. points. He gets two command points. So only one hits. less. Yeah. Yeah, only one less. He re-rolls all hits, which is awesome. He has a four up invon, but he has eight wounds. So he's only got one less than Gilliman. Um, but he has uh, he halves all the damage he takes. So he's tougher than Gilliman. He's nearly half his cost, and he's tougher than Gilliman. Mm-hmm. I think I think he's ace. I love him. Yeah, I think he's too. I, I'm a big fan of Cassius because he's got litanies, and I think litanies are amazing. And he yeah. gets to know two. Pretty sure he knows two because uh, he's like awesome. Hang on, this model knows litany of hate and two other litanies. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's and true. he's got toughness five, for, just because he's a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Cool. And he gets full rerolls uh, to hit in combat as well for units within six. Oh, yeah. So if you are going in with stuff, you know what, a bunch of character spam hiding behind hunters, he can be beneficial there, because then you can buff a couple of the units that are going in, and then you also use that to reroll all hits, oh, if no, you so didn't that's already that, that's have that it. litany of hate. Every, all, all chaplains have that. So you can either do that litany of hate, reroll all, hit, well, re -roll all hits, yeah. or you can do one of but your But you got to reroll all hits, because he knows two, he can do both, it's not just one or the other. Like the other um, oh, chaplain. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, because I was going to say they all know two, but he can recite two. Yes. Ah, that's cool. Yeah, because oh. they all know two, but he gets to speak out loud too. Can to you? Them. Can you? Does it say they have to be different? Uh, this, at the start, of, this model can recite two litanies it knows that have not already been recited by a friendly model. Yeah, so you, it knows that have not already been recited. So if you cast one of them, you can't then recast it. Mm. It's already been said. I was going to say, they're taking him and then going, you got plus one to hit, you got plus one to hit. That could be quite cool. Really? I, I was going to go plus four to charge, plus six to charge. <laughs> <laughs> plus six to charge. 
<laughs> Boom. Go, fella. <laughs> yeah. So on the whole, yeah, the characters they're pretty cool. They're they're awesome. The warlord traits wise, were you impressed by anything warlord trait? I think they're all pretty much what we've had before. Yeah, I mean they're, they're going down the, the yeah the very uh, ultramarine thing of being a bit boring. Yeah. Yeah, calm under fire, so you don't get the penalty for falling back and that's shooting. Odd, that's yeah. quite nice. That's, yeah, that's the one that caught my eye. That was kind of yeah. cool, but wrapping adept is of the, the thing codex. Now, so. It's all right. Yeah, adept of the codex is the um, you regenerate command points on five or six. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the spells though? I, there's a really good spell which is cast on six up or a five up, and uh, you get a command point. You just gain a command. Point. Oh yes, that's the. Uh, it's got a. It's got a name that used to be a thing in the game as well. Scryer's gaze. That that's the one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. It used to be, I think that's used to be a cool. psychic power in 7th as well, didn't it? Yeah, but the Warlord traits other than that, that, there's nothing that stands out to me. No, no, not really. Uh, relics? Um, the uh, there's a cool one, the Santic Halo. So it's a captain or mm. it's a chapter master, but it means that you don't have to buy a storm shield because yep. it, it just gives you a free up invent and you get to deny one psychic power. Yes, yeah. yeah as if he was a psychic. That was, yeah, that, uh, was in, that was in the old book as well. Yeah, I like that one. I've taken that one a couple of times. That's, that's really good. Yeah. Um, um, the weapons, I, I think they're a bit... They're right. Like, there's a sword, which is plus one strength, which which isn't enough, effectively. Like, yeah, you go to wounding knights on fives instead of sixes, mm. but it's still a sword, so it's plus one strength. Minus four AP is nice. It's a flat two damage. Yeah. So I like that. That's quite cool. There was a really cool... Oh, sorry. There was a really cool relic, and I think, I, think we've, I think we've skipped over it, mate. It's ultramarines, isn't it, mate? Um, that it skipped over. I think it might have been in White Scars. That was actually really good. It was like plus three strength, and then it was like minus five flat three damage. And you just take. Uh, it that was the Khan's one. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. One. I skipped yeah, over that the one. Sorry. That's a that's a really cool relic. Yeah, we like that. Uh, right then. So stratagems. Any good ones in here, mate? Uh, so there are a few that are quite funky. So there's ways to give your sergeants now relics in the game. For that a command point. There's there's one there for white scars as well. There's one there for ultramarines, and I think there's going to be one for space marines, but I didn't see it. But it's like the honored sergeant. So you spend a command point, but it means you get access to the special issue war gear. Mm -hmm. So you can make something a little bit tankier. You can give it extra attacks. You can do these funky things. As I said there's a relic for each of them, and um, the ultramarines ones. Uh, you can reroll hits and wound rolls uh, made by models in friendly units against an enemy unit. Mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty cool. Mm, yeah, that's nice. Uh, yeah. There was one that I saw which was kind of cool. Is that you can reset the doctrines. If you've got the doctrines, you've got to assault doctrines. You're like, oh no, I don't like that one. You can reset them. Yeah. Go back to the beginning, and then there's another one where you can just go. Um, where is it? Da -da -da. It's not coverage on it. Cycle of war. That was it. Um, mm. The active. Oh yeah, use this stratagem at the it. start of your battle round. Yeah. Uh, sort. Of Oh, but you have to be on the assault. So if you stop part way, if you stop on number two, uh -huh. then it just stays there. Yeah, and you yeah, can't yeah. use that doctrine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the other one is squad doctrines. So um, select an infantry or bike unit from the army, and then select a doctrine, and they benefit from that doctrine. So that's kind of cool. I mean, ultramarines were always, you know, they got all the doctrines anyway, wasn't it? That's was kind of their thing. I think an Ultramarine's Gladius got more doctrines than other Gladiuses. So, uh... Yeah. In the knight matchup as well, there's the Avenge the Fallen. So that's a CP. If a knight kills something, all Ultramarine units in your army get reroll ones to hit. That's okay. quite nice. Yeah, that's nice. But it's only against one unit, so it's never going to be that useful against Horde armies mm. specifically. But against big models, you know what? Getting reroll ones to hit on las cannons or just firing in general from across the entire table. Yeah, that's quite nice. We like that. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. Okay then. Uh, but yeah, other than that, nothing terribly exciting there. I don't think. They think they're ve vengeance for Calf. That kind of vengeance for Cadia is against <laughs> bearers. <laughs> Yeah, it's very specific. But, um, so, and I've, but I've never heresy, heard of that makes since sense. I started playing the game. <laughs> that, that's very fluffy to pre-heresy stuff. That's what yeah. that's all about. Mm, yeah, I remember reading that book. Yeah. Uh, and then they've got the Indomitus discipline, though. Uh, so I've mentioned Scry Gaze already, because I think it's pretty good. It is cast on 7, sorry. Not a 5 or a 6. And you just gain the command point, mm -hmm. which is pretty nice. 
but it's not just that. So if you choose not to, let's have it. So you can choose to immediately gain the command point, or if you choose not to, once this turn, when resolving an attack made by a model from a friendly Ultramarines unit, or set units within 18 of the psyche, you can reroll the hit, wound, or damage roll. Mm. Which is, if you've, I don't know, I, I just don't think it's worth it. I'd rather take command point. It's all right. I mean, it's it's kind of a cool, like you know, if you stood in the middle of something, because I think that's every unit, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so it can kind of... And 18 inches is a bloody big bubble. So if you stood in the it middle is. of an army and you can go, you know, you can reroll all these damage rolls on last cannons or, or whatever. Yeah. That's kind of cool. I like yeah. that. Uh, but the, the big spell for me is the Psychic Shackles. Uh, oh, Psychic Shackles. I don't know what that one does. Yeah. So, Psychic Shackles has a walk charge value of 6. If manifested, select one enemy unit within 18 and visible to the Psychic. To the start of your next Psychic phase, half the movement characteristic rounding up of models in that unit. Mm -hmm. And when charge or advanced roll is made for that unit, subtract one from that roll. A unit cannot be affected by this Psychic power and the Tenebrous Curse Psychic power that we spoke about earlier. So, it's Doom Bolt, but without the damage. Yeah, but yeah. because it's got no damage, it's easier to cast. So a six up to half the movement of a knight, yeah. and minus one to its charge. I yeah. thank you very much, mate. Yeah, it is kind of cool because if you could take a Phobos Ultramarines guy and take this and Tenebrous Curse, and yeah. you could you can go. Oh, I'm nine inches away from your deployment zone at the start of the game. Half mm -hmm. your movement, half your movement. You're staying right there on two units. That's kind of cool. I like that. Yeah. Uh, the one yeah. that I liked was Telepathic Assault. Um, I can't remember that one. I, think, I think marines struggle with kind of taking down big stuff. They're really good at anti-infantry. So, and I think they're the last cannons and stuff. They're too unreliable because there's not very many, many ways of moving and not having the minus one. So, mm -hmm. they're very unreliable. The marine anti-tank. Um, so I was looking at mortal wound output, that kind of thing, and this is just another one. Uh, you roll two d six and add two to the result. Um, if it beats the leadership characteristic, characteristic in the unit. Then you, take, if you and you can select four. characters, right? Um, it's a targetable power, isn't it? Selecting it within twenty-four. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. You, so you can actually start hitting um, like key characters that might be buffing units. Yeah. And it's a twenty-four inch range as well, which is good for yeah. enemies to try and keep them out of range. So um, I, I, I like that one because it's just um, I was going through kind of making a note of all the different mortal wound outputs um, that Marines mm. have, and they've got a few. They've got a fair few, to be fair. Yeah. But I think that's how they're going to take down big stuff. You know, stacks on bolters and things will are yeah. good, but they don't do so much. I think it's nice to have that kind of in the bank as well. I agree. Hands down. Uh, and then that's it. That's it, everyone. That is everything out of the box. So, like I said, a nice quick rundown, run through. I didn't want it to be massively long. Um, yeah. I just uh, thought it'd be cool for us to give our first reactions to it. And yeah. then, um, you know, and like I said, as we will be keeping our ears to the ground, anything ridiculously broken comes up. It will be put in the Glass Hammer Elite page. Um, As Dan will also be playing it. Uh, yes, I will be. It will be in my list. In my list, which will be in the Elite Battle Reports, and it will be on the Elite page because um, I'm a Marine player and I want to share the love. If I find something broken, I have no no uh, no plans on keeping it to myself. No, he's going to go big. I want to see Marine players one, two, three, four, five at tournaments. <laughs> it's a oh, great mate. time. Is it the? <laughs> <laughs> is it? Just... I'm still happy with knights, mate. Just so goddamn knights off the top tables because they're doing my bloody head in. <laughs> oh man, awesome. all good. Well, Ad, thanks for joining me, mate. I really appreciate oh, that. Thanks for having me on, mate. Really cool points there. I really like it. I'll be uh, I'll be running some lists by you in the next couple of days. Sounds good, mate. So, and thanks a lot for everyone for listening. Right, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. We'll um, right. We'll see you next week on Monday for Manny's Monday Night Mashup when he's back from the spa. Oh, spa day. From the spa day. <laughs> yeah, he's getting his back massaged right now. That or he's getting waxed. Oh, oh can man, you imagine Manny getting waxed? That's someone's job, man. Imagine, Mate, imagine I... having to plait his hair on the on his back. <laughs> oh god. Oh mate. <laughs> <laughs> hey, see you later, guys. Bye. See you guys.